Hey there, so this video will walk you through some of the differences that you will encounter between Substance Modeler and Adobe Medium. So um, just one thing to preface, this is a data, so a lot of these things might still move around you know, further down in the future. But the good news is some of the stuff that you're used to in terms of muscle memory like the undo redo button are the same. Let me just demonstrate here, just draw a stroke. Okay, so if you were to flick your thumbstick to the left, undo, flick it to the right, redo. Same thing like medium. And the sub 2 for smoothing, if you were to hold down the trigger button on your non 2 hand, yep, it still works. So these are the little things that I, I guess in terms of quality of life are kind of pretty much the same. There's not too much worries about that. Um, and the brush too though, the brush too is pretty interesting but let us just, uh, just talk about the, the new menu. So instead of the pie menu that we're all used to here, we're going to get this rectangular menu system that has a lot more options. So let me just like toggle it through just to show you. Yeah, I won't go into the details of it in this video but feel free to play around with it. And occasionally this menu may open up closed like this. What you have to do is just kind of hold down the menu button on your non-brush hand and on the, the hand that you use to kind of like draw your strokes, just pull down on the thumbstick. It should open up the menu across the board. And if you push up, it will collapse all the menu. Okay. Like this. Right. So um, for the brush too, there's uh, something slightly different this time. Let me just pull up a cylinder brush and kind of just show you what's the difference. So there's parametric controls this time. And if you were to see like this little button here, if you hold down it, you can actually kind of adjust the shape on the fly like this. This is going to save a lot of time for many folks and definitely a feature I have been using a lot myself in the beta. Okay, but the biggest change I think people are going to notice is if you flick up on the menu and you're like, hey, where's my graph editor <laughs> or medium? So it doesn't exist anymore in this um, iteration of the Adobe Substance Modeler beta. and the reason is because I, although I was a bit apprehensive to it, but the team really felt like the workflow would have been improved without us trying to navigate a pretty big graph node, you know, and just like scrolling up and down all the time just to find what we have to just um, scout. And in this kind of thing, they kind of came up with a new workflow method. It's called a scope. So for me, I kind of imagine it to be like a Photoshop group and within this big this group itself maybe like let's take this plant stand for example if I were to scope in which is to select the which is just to, you just point at the object that you want with this brush hand and you push up over here on the thumbstick this is kind of you being in the layer of the the object so you can, you are free to kind of just move around the items as you would and you can continue to go in deeper into the hierarchy if you were to point at the object within it. So let me just kind of point at the stem and now I'm deeper into the stem so I can just do changes. Them. Yeah, this scoping thing, I think it's going to take a while for most people to get used to it. I, I was pretty confused about it for the first, I think, month or so. But I've come to realize like it is actually a very, very valuable part of the workflow in Modeler. Because maybe you have saw it um, just a couple of seconds ago on the screen that 
if I edited something on this side, things will reflect on the instances. So, um, what it does is just really, it creates, it allows you to create groups and from the groups you can make linked instances to propagate across the entire scene. And the example I'm going to show you here is actually this leaf. I sculpted it, just a single piece of leaf, but I kind of duplicated it into this little stem itself. So I can scope into the leaf and adjust it and it will reflect across the changes. See? Including everything here. Because it's all a link back to this main parent. So um, I think most of us are going to have to relook the way we sculpt stuff. Like for me, I tend to treat it like a plastic model kit um, kind of process. I would do like the little, little parts first, build up to a slightly larger part before I make an array of these things over here if I have to in the scene. But yeah, um, the main selling point really for this thing is the instancing system for me. I use it to create pretty big scenes in a shorter amount of time. And it's a lot more manageable in terms of not having to go through a graph editor to you know, look for stuff. I can just like thumbstick up to edit. Let's see this one, maybe the roots. Stick up here, I did everything. I'm stick down to go back. But if you want to undo it, no problem. So yeah, um, I'll probably make a video on on some of the scoping functionalities. But here's kind of like I feel what you need to know to get up to speed in software for the first couple of days first. Um, just relax, have fun with it, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.